Live from San Jose, California, in the heart of Silicon Valley, it's theCUBE. Covering Hadoop Summit 2016, brought to you by Hortonworks. Here's your host, George Gilbert. Welcome back, this is George Gilbert. We're at Hadoop Summit 2016. We're in the San Jose Convention Center. And we have with us Mark Herring, VP Developer Evangelism at Hortonworks. Welcome, Mark. Thank you so much, George. So, um, we were talking a few minutes, you know, before we got, got going. Hadoop as an ecosystem has been showing incredible innovation and expansion, but it, that, can, the, the downside is that can make it hard to target you know, for a developer. Sure. What, what can I choose as a developer yeah. that I can assume everyone would have? How, does that, how has that answer evolved over the yeah, last absolutely. year? Yeah, absolutely. So I think what we've seen, just, just like we saw in the open source realm on the platform side, you know, the whole migration to open source was to allow innovation to happen everywhere, not yeah. just in one place. And we've tried to do the same thing now in Hortonworks on the community side or on the developer side going, so Mr. Developer, where are you? So we've created this thing called community.hortonworks.com. Yeah. Um, set of you know great technical articles Q and A type things to allow sort of this evolved platform to go and ask questions like so I'm 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 new and I'm trying to do an analytic work workload what should I use and you might then try and solve that at sort of the Spark level and sort of down at the you know nuts and bolts and, and there's sort of you know articles and Q and A down there or you might be starting it more at the Zeppelin notebook level depends where you're coming in from it and so our view of the world is you know start wherever you want to and ask the community for help right so it's sort of this more of a collaborative way than Hortonworks says this is the way to do it or not this is the way to do it. So we're trying to embrace that whole community style to our developers and to developers at large to go and say, this is how you embrace the whole ecosystem. So it sounds almost like you want to help the community be self-organizing around different uh, solution platforms. Yeah, I wouldn't, platforms just maybe too strong a word, maybe solution areas, so like, okay. you know, data science and analytics would be a good area. It's not necessarily there's a data science and analytics platform, okay. but that's sort of a particular, you know, audience type or a set of developers or, you know, you know, data science that will go and live there. Just like there's, you know, we have sort of another area, we, we call them uh, tracks in the platform, yeah. uh, inside inside the community, and you, you might have something there around data ingestion and streaming. Now inside of there, you might be using different technologies or not worry, you, you don't even know which technology to start with, but you start there going, hey, I've got the stream problem, how do I go off and solve the streaming problem? And the answer might be, hey, use NiFi. It might be to use a different technology, but you really, you know, we're involved in the, in, in the community connection. Obviously, our developers are on there, our, our SEs are on there, but it's the broader community that's really then answering those questions. And because we think very much like open source did to the platform, almost democratizing the platform, we want to democratize some of that knowledge and let you you as developer choose. So, okay, we're, this is a develop, we're, we're taking a developer perspective, but the developer is is also the one who translate that translate the infrastructure value into business sure. value. So, what are the early applications? We asked Herb Kunitz this, but I'd like to get yeah, your yeah. opinion since you're working with the developers every day. Like ETL offload from the data warehouse yep. was sort of the first universal yep. application. What are some of the most popular ones you're seeing now? There's still a lot of ETL offload, right? There's still a lot, you know, and I sort of say there's still, we're in the phase of, you know, uh, let me capture the data. Let me get the data in there and I'll, I'll analyze it. But we're seeing a lot more of, um, you know, how do I bring in data in motion into data rest? So not necessarily just ETL from sort of my relational database system, but you know, how do I start capturing all this signal out there and putting it in a place so I can then look for the noise uh, uh -huh. or look through the noise and yeah. find the signal? Um, but as I say, the, the most common thing now is we're seeing a lot of sort of questions on is, you know, how do I find those signals, right? So whether it's using, you know, a SQL way of looking it up um, or you know, sort of looking at Hive, how to how to you know translate to get that information. I sort of see that's where I see a lot of my developers or developers in the community asking a lot of questions is, how am I going to get that, find that stuff? So we've done, we're at the phase of, I've captured all this stuff now, but now how do I go and, and look for that stuff inside of there? So it, would it be fair to say that this community um, helps developers, corporate developers, to pick the right set of building blocks to solve problems? Um, but commercial developers need assumptions about a, a volume sort of, pl uh, yep. maybe platform is the wrong word, but a volume collection of services mm -hmm. that are in common. Yep. So does this Hortonworks community help the corporate developer, the commercial developer, or both? Both, right? I think that you know the the whole thing is we have all different types sitting out there, right? So we have yeah. the you know deep 
data scientists that's you know, publishing uh, different Zeppelin notebooks up on, you know, on the community going, here's my notebook, this is how I've done it. You've got sort of the, you know, hardcore, um, you know, uh, Hadoop core developer telling you about, you know, hey, how, how did they configure the different clusters and the different nodes. And we have a great set of articles there also defining what these look like. So it's, I think you can you can engage with this at any area you like. And if there's not, if someone hasn't answered your question there, or you, haven't, you, know, you don't see an answer, ask your own question, how do I do this? You know, having said that, we, we do see people starting a lot in sort of the um, Hortonworks sandbox, right? So that's, a, you know, our, our collection stuff, all starting with, you know, uh, basically the, the NiFi experience, which has got a set, set of preset services. We've got, let me go and start with that. But what I found with a lot of developers, you know, they have a particular problem in mind, and they, they're trying to look through the different solutions, you know, with help to try and give back to the business again, say, okay, I've found the technology that's gonna go and solve this, this problem, Mr. Business. And then, once they've gone through that, then it's maybe the, you know, more of an operations play, and we see a lot of sort of, you know, DevOps people that they, on there going, how do I, how do I, um, well, you know, how do I worry about scale? What do, you know, how do I sort of understand replication? How do I understand this whole hybrid cloud thing? What should run here and here? And, you know, it's again, they're asking the questions of the community, we're part of the community, we have ideas on that. But I think the whole theme from us, and, and you know, it's very much like why do we embrace open sources? You know, this knowledge base is infinite if we if we appeal to the community. And so yes, although we're part of it, we're not trying to be prescriptively part of it. Okay, interesting. So, uh, someone who's try taking the first steps towards IoT applications yep. might say, okay, I have an ingest need, data in motion. Um, I might start with Kafka, sure. but that might really just be useful for data coming in, you know, from a single site. Yep. Or I might have Ni5, which exactly. is sort of Kafka grown up for the yeah, whole yeah. world. Yeah. Um, and then I might feed Spark. Mm -hmm. um, exactly. And. But in that case, these are these aren't really project. Well, I was going to say these aren't projects that are mentored in a, in a sense by Hortonworks, but they are in the case of NiFi. Mm -hmm. So it doesn't it doesn't really matter. You're not trying to be prescriptive with no. Hortonworks projects. Absolutely it's, not. You yeah. want to support whatever combination of services. We wouldn't allow for that conversation to happen, right? So if someone's using yeah. Kafka and then and going, what's the best way of doing it? Yeah. And you know, we might have one of our engineers or an engineer in the community going, you know, hey, this is the way that. I've done my Kafka implementation. You know, yeah. for instance, on the community, we you know we have um, users from Cloudera, from MapR, asking questions out there as as well. Why? Because it's the it's the wealth of information. I think right. we've got to get rid of these whole silos. Going, this is the Hortonworks domain, right? And, we, and so we spend a lot of time within this community to go and say, how do we expand it to allow for the Kafka discussion to happen with the NiFi discussion? Because there's good in all, all of these things, right? And, right. And, and and so yes, from a you know when we get down. Hey, you know, how do we want to implement it and, and, and that type of thing? And our SEs maybe the customer, you know, maybe they're looking at it and, you, and then you're paying for our expertise. That's not the goal of the community. The goal is, yes, expertise is there, but if, you know, obviously bring in our professional services, you know, we obviously will use use more of our technologies, but that's that's not the that's not the community goal. Well, let me ask one last question um, before we wrap up. But as we move more to the cloud, or yep. customers are, they're not junking, obviously, what they've started mm -hmm. on-prem, but maybe new workloads, yep. and there's got to be some movement of data or some Absolutely. interoperation of the applications. How does that developer evangelism discussion change in the cloud? In other words, are there services that, you know, uh, whether storage or sure. other elements, that are going to be more appropriate for the cloud? Well, I think there's obviously the you know the big challenge in the cloud, and you saw some of the keynote today, right? Is you know you have different cloud pro providers, and their goal as a cloud provider is to lock you into their particular cloud. I mean, yeah. it's, it's it's a pretty some you know simple concept, right? So I think you know what we've seen in the community a lot of discussions around if I'm deploying for the cloud, what do I need to worry about if I'm deploying into AWS, you know, versus Azure versus Google Cloud? What are the what are the gotchas, and how would I uh, move these things together? So yes, there's different services that you might be thinking of. Mm -hmm. um, you know, a lot of developers I, I see out now community or more looking just sort of at the, at the base services and you know hey you know what am I going to use for you know HDFS in terms of the storage or the you know the Hadoop storage side of the world what am I going to use for data ingest um, and there's a lot of concern and in, in terms of like a debate I would sort of say maybe there's better than concern on hey if I'm going to go and be targeting this particular cloud instance what do I need to worry about in case I ever want to move it there's still that 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 thought those thoughts out there that and there's there's healthy communication happening I wouldn't say there's a, there's a definitive answer so it sounds like that that a age-old cross-platform tension between how do I take advantage of one platform 
uniquely versus exactly. how do I yeah. balance the and, need and, for portability? Maybe, you know, maybe part of that, that old age, uh, um, age old question is just be, you know, be aware of what you're doing. So you've made these choices, therefore you know you've done it, right? Because right. the last thing you want to do is go, I didn't know I made the choice. Right. And so it's trying to give people the choice. And if they haven't thought about it, hopefully by posting a question on the, you know, community.hortonworks.com, they have other people with you know a lot surface more knowledge. The surface the issue, have you thought about this? What yeah. about this? So there's again, a lot of sort of good checklists. Checklists for thinking about the cloud. Checklists for, for doing doing data ingest, right? Checklists okay. for, you know, and so again, it's, I'd love to say, well, content comes from us. Absolutely doesn't, right? It, I mean, right. It's, it's, it's a community effort. All right, with that, we're going to have to take it uh, and it. Uh, leave off till part two at uh, the next Hadoop Summit. Yes. All right, this is George Gilder with Mark Herring, uh, VP Developer Evangelism and Community at HortonWorks, and we'll be back after this short break. Thanks.